Hello friends, so in this video we are going to discuss mediators of inflammation part 2 in which we are first starting with cytokines. Okay, first we will discuss about cytokines and chemokines, then we will move for the next. So, cytokines and chemokines. So, the first we will discuss the basic definition of the cytokines. So, cytokines are the proteins, okay, they are the proteins which are released by many cell types and principally it, it, it is produced by lymphocytes, okay and macrophages lymphocyte macrophages and dendritic cells so again cytokines are the proteins which are produced by many cell types principally activated lymphocytes macrophages and dendritic cells but can be synthesized also by endothelial as well as epithelial and certain connective tissue okay and what is the function and it mediate and regulate immune and inflammatory reactions so again repeating cytokines are proteins produced by many cell types that mediate and regulate immune and inflammatory reactions clear now the next point by convention growth factor that act on epithelial and mesenchymal cells are not grouped under cytokines important okay growth factor is not under the cytokines by convention clear now we are starting first with your tumor necrosis factor and interleukin 1 okay so tnf and il1 say serve critical roles in leukocyte recruitment by promoting addition of leukocyte to endothelium and their migration through the vessels it means these two have main function as leukocyte recruitment leukocyte recruitment is the main function of tnf and il1 tumor necrosis factor and interleukin 1 clear now tnf and IL, il1 is produced mainly by activated macrophage and dendritic cells okay so these both cytokines are mainly produced by macrophages and dendritic cell but tnf tnf is also produced by t lymphocytes and mast cell whereas il1 interleukin 1 is produced by some epithelial cell as well as okay some epithelial cell il1 is also synthesized by some epithelial cell tnf is also by t lymphocyte but these two are mainly by macrophages and dendritic cells is that clear now the secretion of tnf and il1 can be stimulated by microbial products can be stimulated by either microbial products or immune complexes or foreign bodies or physical injury okay so there are variety of stimulant which can increase the synthesis of tumor necrosis factor and interleukin 1 clear now the production of tumor necrosis factor is induced by signals through toll like receptors okay and other microbial sensor and the synthesis of interleukin 1 is stimulated by the same signals but the generation of biological active form of this cytokine is dependent on the inflammos inflammasomes which we will discuss later on this is a multiprotein complex okay inflammasome this is a multiprotein complex so this is the basic difference between tnf and il1 once again i am repeating the production of tumor necrosis factor is induced by signals through toll like receptors and other microbial sensors and the synthesis of il1 interleukin 1 is stimulated by the same signals but the generation of the biological active form of the cytokine is dependent on the this multiprotein complex clear now the action of tnf and il1 contribute to the local and systemic reactions of the inflammation the most important roles of these cytokines in inflammation are the following i am following your domains okay the first one is the first function is endothelial activation so this is the first function that is the endothelial activation okay both tnf and il1 act on the endothelium to induce a spectrum of changes referred to as endothelial activation what are those changes so these changes include increase expression of enp selectin the first one is increase expression of enp selectin okay the second that is increase formation of ligands for leukocyte integrins okay ligands formation for leukocyte integrins and increased production of various mediators including other cytokines and chemokines growth factors okay and it also it and increased pro coagulant it, it, it also acts as pro coagulant okay so these are the basic functions which are included under the endothelial activation now moving to the second function okay that is the activation of leukocytes and other cells so the first one is the endothelial activation the second is leukocytes and other cells activation tumor necrosis factor augments responses of neutrophil to the other stimuli such as bacteria endotoxin and stimulate the microcytial activity of macrophages okay in part by inducing production of the no clear so this is the basic mechanism now 
coming to the IL one, interleukin one. So this is the function of T1 necrosis factor, which is augmenting the responses of neutrophils. Coming to the IL one. So IL one activates your fibroblasts. Okay, IL one activates fibroblast to synthesize more and more collagen fiber. IL one is stimulating fibroblast. It will synthesize more and more collagen and stimulate pro proliferation of your synovial and mesenchymal cells there will be proliferation of synovial and mesenchymal cell clear now il1 also induces also stimulates th17 response okay which in turn induce acute inflammation we will discuss in detail th17 later on so the first function was endothelial activation the second is your leukocytes and other cells activation in which TNF is in augmenting the response of neutrophils IL-1 is doing two functions first fibroblast induction and then second is TH17 induction here yeah. now moving to the third function that is your systemic acute phase response systemic acute phase response so what is this so IL-1 and TNF induce the systemic acute phase response associated with infection or injury okay including fever now they are also implicated in the response of syndrome of sepsis which we will discuss later on now coming to the one important function of the tnf tnf regulates energy balance by promoting lipid and protein mobilization okay it helps to regulate energy balance by promoting lipid and protein mobilization and by suppressing your appetite very very important point here suppression of appetite clear tnf regulates energy balance by promoting lipid and protein mobilization and by suppressing your appetite clear therefore sustained production of tnf therefore sustained production of tnf contributes to a condition which is known as cachexia this is very important point continuous synthesis of tnf continuous secretion of tnf can cause cachexia what is cachexia so it is a pathological state characterized by it is characterized by the first sorry i am writing here okay it is characterized by the first is weight loss clear the first point is weight loss and the second is anorexia clear so these are the functions of cytokines once again i am revising the first one is endothelial activation okay endothelium activation the second one is your leukocyte and other cell activation in which we have discussed about tnf and il1 il1 has two functions fibroblast and th17 the third one is systemic acute phase response in which we have seen tnf is promoting energy balance okay regulates energy balance it can cause appetite so longer stimulation of tnf longer synthesis of tnf can cause a condition known as cachexia cachexia is characterized by weight loss and anorexia now now we will also discuss some important points about chemokines we have discussed about cytokines then going to discuss about chemokines so the first we will discuss definition of the chemokines so chemokines are family of small proteins they are also proteins okay and they act primarily as chemo attractants so this is very important they act primarily as chemo attractant okay so chemokines are the proteins which mainly act as chemo attractant and about 40 different chemokines and 20 different receptor for chemokines have been identified and they are classified into four major groups according to the arrangement of cysteine residues in the proteins so we will discuss those four groups so starting with the first group so the first group is cxc chemokines okay the first group is your cxc chemokines which have one amino acid residue separated separating the first two of the four conserved cysteine residue see this four group is based on the cysteine residue there are four conserved cysteine residues and this one cysteine and one two cysteine is separated by one another amino acid so this is known as cxc chemokines now what is the function so these chemokines acts primarily on neutrophil very very important this cxc chemokines is mainly for neutrophils clear and this cxc chemokines is mainly for neutrophil and one of the example of the cxc chemokines is your il8 interleukin 8 okay so cxc chemokines is responsible mainly for neutrophil and one of the example is interleukin 8 it is secreted by activated macrophages endothelial cell and other cell types and cause activation and chemotaxis of neutrophils with limited activity on monocytes and eosinophil mainly for neutrophil but may for very little very little for monocytes and eosinophil clear its most important inducers are microbial products and other cytokines in mainly its inducer it is mainly induced by microbial products as well as interleukin 1 and tnf 
so these are the all functions about the cxc one second devising it it mainly for neutrophils one of the example is interleukinate it may for monocyte and eosinophil it is induced by microbial products and interleukin 1 and tnf mainly clear now moving to the second that is your cc chemokines okay it has the two cysteine residues is continuous no sep no separation by any amino acid now the C the cc chemokines which include it include mcp1 what is mcp1 mcp1 is a monocyte chemo attractant protein it also include eotaxin okay it also include mip1 alpha what is mip1 alpha so macrophage inflammatory protein 1 alpha clear and last one is rentase what is rentase so this is regulated and normal t cell expressed and secreted clear so once again i am repeating the cc chemokines which include mcp1 that is your monocyte chemo attractant protein 1 mcp1 monocyte chemo attractant protein 1 then eotaxin then mip1 alpha that is your macrophage inflammatory protein 1 alpha and then rentase that is your regulated and normal t cell expressed and secreted clear and they generally this four mcp1 eotaxin mip1 and rentase they generally attract your monocytes eosinophil basophil lymphocytes but are not as potent chemo attractant for neutrophil because for neutrophil the potent chemo attractant is cc cxc chemokines okay which is one example is ilvert so these are very very is a monocyte uh, chemo attractant protein or eotaxin or macrophage inflammatory proteins or rentase okay this is mainly for monocytes eosinophil basophil and leukocyte not as a potent for neutrophil clear although most of the chemokines in this class have overlapping action clear and one more here eotaxin eotaxin selectively recruits your eosinophil name itself suggesting eotaxin so it is mainly for eosinophil clear this is the second class now moving to the third class third class is our c chemo c chemokines c chemokines so it lacks the first and third of the four conserved cysteine the first important point okay and the c chemokines are relatively specific for lymphocytes very very important this is more specific for lymphocytes and one of the, one of the example is your lymphotactin so cxc was for neutrophil cc for your monocyte eosinophil basophil leukocyte and c is mainly for lymphocytes clear now moving to the next your next is your cx3 chemokines clear so cx3 chemokines contain three amino acid separated between the two cysteine okay cxcc so these are the two cysteine residues separated by three another amino acid and the only known member of this class is very important that is fractal kin okay fract alkene this is the one known member of this class cxc c chemokines fractal alkene okay and this chemokine exists in two forms these chemokines exist in two forms <coughs> okay a uh, cell surface bound protein cell surface bound protein okay which is induced on endothelial cells by inflammatory cytokines that promote strong adhesion of monocyte and t cells and another is sorry cell surface binding protein okay and the another is your another in soluble form okay which is derived by proteolysis of the membrane bound protein that has potent chemo attract activity for the same cell so one, once again i am repeating cxc okay the only known member is fractal kin these chemokines this chemokine exists in two forms a cell surface bound protein which is induced on endothelial cells by inflammatory cytokines that promote a strong adhesion of monocyte and t cells okay this is for mainly for t cells and monocyte strong adhesion clear and uh, the another one that is a soluble form which is derived by proteolysis of the membrane bound protein that has potent chemo attract activity for the same cell clear now some important points which i have dis i will discuss here. chemokines mediate their activities by binding to very important gpcr g protein couple receptors okay these receptors are also called cxcr ccr or like that okay not so important but the important point where i mention certain chemokine receptors such as cxcr4 ccr5 okay they act as co receptor for they act as co receptor mind it they act as co receptor for a viral envelope glycoprotein of hiv 
that the, the cause of its HIV is the cause of its and eh? okay and that are involved in binding and entry of this virus inside the cells so this is a clinical point very important clinical point that is certain chemo kind receptors such as cxcr4 ccr5 okay they act as co-receptors for violet enveloped glycoprotein of hiv and then leading to the aids so these are also involved in entry of virus inside the cells clear so this is a very important clinical point now what are the main functions of the chemokines chemokines may be displayed at high concentration attached to proteoglycans they have two main important functions which i am going to discuss here the two main important functions the first one is it is involved in acute inflammation so inflammatory chemokines are the ones whose production is induced by microbes and other stimuli okay and these chemokines stimulate leukocyte attachment to endothelium by acting on leukocyte to increase its affinity for integrins which we have discussed in acute inflammation the second function is your maintenance of tissue architecture so some chemokines are produced constitutively in tissues and those are called as called as homeostatic sorry homeostatic chemokines okay because they are responsible for maintaining the homeostasis okay so they are known as homeostatic chemokines clear now the okay so so this is about your tissue architecture and these proteins which are responsible for maintenance of tissue architecture these organize various cell types in different anatomic regions of the tissues such as t and b lympho sites in discrete areas of the spleen and lymphocyte so this is the funds one of the important function that is the tissue architecture maintain so this is all about your chemokines